right, this is a multiple pack. We have clams, starfish, there's an earthworm, there's a rat in here, the fetal pig. Dissection. It's big business. Each year, six million animals are killed and processed by biological supply companies. Who are the animals used for dissection? Where do they come from? How can carcasses like these teach a lesson about life? For more than a year, undercover investigators from PETA documented what goes on inside the two largest biological supply companies in the United States. Carolina Biological Supply Company and Ward's Biology. The investigators recorded 181 violations of the Animal Welfare Act, 99 violations of North Carolina anti-cruelty statutes, and 23 violations of federal safety and health regulations. How do biological suppliers get dogs like these? Animals come from breeders and dealers who have a history of maintaining animals in conditions that violate even the most basic federal requirements. The supply companies buy dogs from poorly run local pounds like this one. These dogs are being lifted off the ground by the neck on a choke pole and dumped together into a crowded gas chamber. Extreme crowding leads to panic and fighting, and gas dogs from this facility arrive at biological suppliers covered with blood. PETA's investigator recalls one such incident. One day, the CBS driver delivered a shipment of what were supposed to be dead dogs. When the animals were unloaded, uh, from beneath a pile of dead dogs, there crawled out a small brown dog who was still alive. He had survived the gassing and a two-hour ride in these conditions. As he was crawling out helpless and looking for comfort, the employees would sit around laughing and joking, and one employee was swinging a metal rod at the dog. How about the cats who end up on racks like these? Many come from breeders, while others are sold to supply companies by bunchers who collect strays and even steal animals from their guardian's yards. One facility, owned by the Wise family in North Carolina, supplies cats to Ward's Biology. Cats sold to biological supply companies live in small, dirty cages with three to six other cats. Some cats die from these conditions. They are often deprived of food and water, and many cats fight one another because of stress. If they survive their stay here, things get worse. This is the back entrance to Ward's. The black box on the left is the gas chamber. Although Ward's reports only dead cats to federal inspectors, here dealer John Wise and a young boy unload live cats onto the dock and force them into smaller cages to be gassed. Dead ones who are too battered even to be used for dissection are tossed aside. Inside Ward's, Cats' corpses are strewn about in filthy conditions. Workers in Carolina Biological Supply Company's animal processing plant told PETA's investigators, if people knew exactly where the cats came from, they'd shut us down. Inside Carolina Biological Supply Company, this metal rod is used to beat cats into their death cage. The cats, usually 25 to 30 per cage, are then loaded into a small chamber to be gassed. Afterward, the gassed cats are dumped onto the floor and loaded into wheelbarrows to be taken to the formaldehyde station. They are treated like garbage, their bodies tossed around in front of live cats. In a back room, cats are already being processed. Stretched out on wooden boards, the cats are hooked up to tubes and slowly filled with a formaldehyde solution. Many cats are still alive during this extremely painful process. Watch closely as cats struggle while the formaldehyde enters their bodies. PETA's investigators found these cats biting down on the sponges that had been shoved into their mouths and twitching their paws as they were pumped full of chemicals. Other cats' chests heaved up and down as the formaldehyde entered their bodies. These rats are being filled with formaldehyde while still living. 
Employees often joked about the way the animals, especially the rats, would move and kick about when they were hooked up to the formaldehyde tube. Here, an employee hooks up a live rat to a formaldehyde pump and spits on him. Callous behavior is routine. Since they view the animals as nothing more than scientific tools, workers often mock the animals. In one instance, PETA's investigator witnessed workers dunking a rabbit underwater repeatedly and finally drowning him. There are other drawbacks to dissection. Biologists agree. The continued removal of frogs from the wild at the current rate could spell environmental disaster in many regions of the world. In one three-week period, Carolina Biological Supply Company killed nearly 33,000 frogs. Biological supply companies can be chemical wastelands. The barrels contained phenol, isopropanol, resin, you name it. I would watch employees dump the residue from the barrels with the chemicals all mixed together and let them seep into the ground. Dissection is a $30 million a year industry. Schools can spend thousands of dollars on a single order. 3D models provide the added benefit of detailed views of both internal and external animal anatomy, anatomically scaled and numbered for easy identification. 12 bullfrogs, enough for 24 students, cost upward of $100. Humane alternatives such as this computer simulation can be reused for years and pay for themselves in one year. A PETA investigator rescued this cat, named Fizzle, from Carolina Biological Supply Company. Fizzle was going to be killed so that his body could be shipped off to a science classroom. On behalf of Fizzle and all other animals, please don't dissect. For more information and to order free cutout dissection campaign materials, visit PETA2.com or call 757-622-7382. Thank you. <laughs>